This time on Pihar Rescue, two adventurous swimmers ignore the flag barrier. Right there, right there, arm up, arm up. Keep You gotta flip it. Two famous Olympians open the floodgates. We're digging a drench. We're, we're training for the Olympics, uh, for windsurfing. And two teenage girls go missing after patrol has ended. Surf con. Did you please enter that before that sport? 50 minutes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. so they can there one second and go on the next. Bright and early at Pihar. The professional lifeguards commence their morning ritual of setting up patrol. This includes the thorough testing of all equipment and the running in of the motor before the flags are put out. A beautiful day like this is sure to attract many a beachgoer, including a school group undergoing beach education and water safety, which is something that wouldn't go amiss for these two young men, one of whom is hidden behind the rock. The rough surf means they cannot swim back through the keyhole, the passage they took to get there in the first place. The only way back is to swim. This is extremely dangerous. The other guy's trying to get in the water now, so... Tommy and Sam make a run for the IRB immediately. What's going on? They're on the boat. Directly in front of these rocks runs Piha's most notorious rip straight out to sea. They waste precious energy as the boys swim directly against the current of the rip. But then, disaster. The motor won't start, even after such thorough maintenance. Come on, mate, you got it. Stay with it. Tommy updates Logan and checks on the swimmers. Yeah, man, it's not He's going out of the Yeah, he's caught up in the water. They are not moving an inch. Just as the backup IRB arrives, Tommy's hand is lighter fluid to fire. And the engine finally starts. But after this two minute delay, there is no time to spare as they set off for the beehive. The rock formation the swimmers are in front of. The swimmers are no longer visible. Murphy's Law isn't making it easy for the crew, who have more obstacles ahead. And to navigate their way through the huge sets is a task on its own. But they cannot just blitz it. Timing is crucial to avoid flipping the IRB. Get there, get there, get there. Get there. Get A very close call. Fallen rocks. One swimmer is now further in, battling the whitewash. Yeah, back to IRB, copy. Yeah, get in by the beehive. He struggles to keep his head above the water as he fights the relentless oncoming sets. As Tommy and Sam approach, he is under a wave and he goes unseen. But the IRB spot the other swimmer thought to have been on the rocks. Just swim out the keyhole. Yeah, not the one swim out. Is your buddy still out there in the keyhole? All right. Come out by the bar, just inside the by falling rocks. Another guy there. Right there, right there. Arm up, arm up. Oh, I see him. He's in. is completely exhausted and battered and bruised from the rocks. 
Cloud B driver Sam takes him to the closest shore where his friend awaits. Hey, you were the one out by the keyhole, right? Up on the rocks? Did you jump in or did you get washed in? I am um, climbed in. You climbed in and then you swam? Were you swimming against that rib right there? Yeah. Going pretty hard, huh? Yeah. 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 yeah, man, whenever you come to the beach, you should come check with us. Because yeah, we know about all these conditions. Yeah. yeah we right told you that that's not a great spot to go swimming. <laughs> I told them again and again, it's real rough. Like, hey, so what's yeah. your name? Jimmy. Jimmy, how old are you? Uh, 21. 21 from where? Uh, Melbourne. Melbourne. Yes. Hello, my name's Jimmy, 21 from Melbourne. Call me. What the? Fellow friends on the car park watch in bewilderment. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to them? I wouldn't know. I was in the van even asleep. Oh, the tunnel over there. Yeah. They decided to go in the tunnel and got sucked out the other side. <laughs> Went for a swim through the cave because I thought there's uh, not many opportunities. I got to swim through a cave. Got to the other side and it was just way too rough to get back down the other way. So I thought I'd jump in from that end. Uh, got caught in a big rip. The muscles started fatiguing, and it's just kind of stopped there. They weren't getting anywhere. They were struggling. They were struggling. Actually, Pat got himself in. Pat got himself in pretty well, but the other one was just couldn't do anything. Much like Jimmy, lifeguard Tommy too has his own lasting impressions of Pihar to recount. Definitely some uh, go for it moments, and uh, yeah, Sam's a great driver. Got us out real quick. We're all out here safe, we didn't flip, and uh, yeah, successful rescue, so that's good. At Hot Water Beach, it's low tide. Hundreds swarm to the natural springs for some R&R &R in the hot pools. As usual, Patrol Captain Gary and Vice Captain Andre are on duty. Yeah, we've got a pretty nice day today. Um, we've got some good weather again, which is nice, a bit of light wind. The perfect conditions in hand with low tide here translates to lifeguards on their toes. Every time it's low tide, we have a little patrol down here and um, just because there's hundreds of people down here so um, they usually get hot in the pools and then they go to cool off so they jump in the, um, the ocean and we got a pretty gnarly rip running there. Which is exactly where these two men are now caught in. Lifeguards Craig and Thomas swim out with tubes immediately. <laughs> The two men are completely out of breath and graciously take the reprieve. <laughs> Seemingly unbeknownst to them, they walk straight into the most known rip here. But as is often the case, where there are rocks, there are rips. And this one is on fire today. Even the lifeguards struggle to tow the swimmers in. That rip um, certainly looks like it's moving quite fast, and the one on the other side of flags may also be a problem. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? The men are not feeling well. You're welcome to come and sit up with us for a little while. Well, those two men just uh, went straight out on the rip, straight past our no swimming sign. Um, Craig was very onto it and saw them going out and started to respond as soon as they got to about waist depth. Um, the first one got taken off his feet and the son, I think, went to go um, help him out. Andre checks for signs of fluid in the lungs. It was actually, the rip suddenly got quite strong. Um, I couldn't swim against it, um, pulling him, so Thomas had to help me out and um, get him in the last little bit. That's all, that's all you need to do. Oh, thanks. Yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah, that's good. I don't know what's happened, because we're swimming together, and then my father said to me, come on, come on. I saw that my father in one minute ago behind of me, but now he's going maybe 100 or 150 meter yeah, in the right hand. And then I, I just hands up and they coming and they, 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 after maybe after one minute they coming and alive my father. We'll just have to see what we can do in terms of preventatives, keeping people out of the rips and um, in between the flags. When, when they coming, I just my, my feeling my feeling was new life. At Hot Water Beach, 
It's a typical sight to see every other person carry a spade, usually for the obvious reason. But these two guys have another agenda at the other end of the beach. They dig with the plan to empty this usually free-flowing stream to the ocean. Uh, some guys have turned up, must have had a hot pool, seen the lagoon's really deep, so they're going to dig it through and let the water go. Hello, boys. What are you up to? Oh, we're, uh, we're digging a hole. <laughs> a trench. We're digging a drench. We're, we're training for the Olympics uh, for windsurfing, and we thought this is good cross training. So we heard about the uh, great drain out at Hotwater Beach, so we've come all the way from around the world to dig it out. All jokes aside, after doing some research, their story actually checks out. They are, in fact, Olympian windsurfers. This is Dorian van Rijsselberg from the Netherlands, ranked number one in the world. And his friend Zach Plavzik represented Canada. Potty residents can be proud the boys training here for the Olympics helped Dorian from the Netherlands win gold. Of course, with the coaching help of New Zealand Aaron McIntosh, Canada's Zach Plavzik finished 10th overall out of 38. We'll get, we'll get 90%, go and have a cold beer, and then uh, come back and finish her up and then get the boogie boards out. So that should get quite interesting because there's still a lot of people on the other side and being like sheep, they just come back to it and they see one person crossing, so they all try and crossing normally in the wrong place. Hey, have you boys got resource consent for this? Yeah, yeah it's we a got a bloody big trench you dig in there. We got a permit uh, at the cafe. Oh, okay, that's okay, from yeah. the cafe. Yeah. What happens when you burst the bubble? Then it's going to be all lot of fun. <laughs> so we just get to watch. It is fun. Is? can understand why they're doing it. I think it'll make for, uh, for some more excitement to see the tourists to try and get back over uh, through this way. So you we do do it from time to time. It's time normally we do it to time with low, uh, high tides, so, we, so there's not many people around when we do it. These boys have timed this so they get the reward of surfing the wave created by the water surging out. And so the digging continues well past the end of patrol. The digging has created a lot of attention. And until the stream is big enough, some fun can be had by the younger generation. Yeah. Everything going to plan, yes. <laughs> Job's done. Sit back, relax and watch, bro. It is not long before there is a decent flow of water. And people. start pumping soon. Some of the older kids will start getting in there soon and boogie board. That is not the wish at Piha. Patrol has ended and two young girls are reported missing. Lifeguard and cameraman Byron is the only one left on the beach. He has run into a father in distress at the north side of the stream by Lion Rock. Well, now have a look on the beach. Just as we go past and see if you can see them. Were they with anyone else? No. Just them? With no immediate sighting doing a drive-by, Byron needs backup. He takes the father to the surf club to raise the alarm. All right, tie your dog up. I'll be back down in a moment. Don't go anywhere. Luckily, there is still one other lifeguard, Eli, an American exchange guard. My daughter and a friend uh, are swimming down here, and because uh, no dogs allowed, they see the move the dogs on the other on the other side of Iron Rock. So I got the girls out of the water and they said, uh, you know, go on the other side of the, uh, that little stream there on the other side of Iron Rock we can have the dog and I'll see right. you there. So I'm going to yeah, need right. you to yeah. stay quiet for a moment because I'm going to need to get some details from you. Risky, risky, risky. Surfcom, Surfcom, this is Piha. Do you copy of it? Hi, Piha, go ahead. Surfcom, Surfcom from Piha, informing you that we have a search underway for two 11 year old girls last seen three quarters of an hour ago, that is 45 minutes ago, in the water on, in South Piha. Could you please activate the call out squad? Two 11 year old girls uh -huh. last seen 45 minutes ago, South Piha. Uh huh. He mm. went back to get the truck, meet them next to Iron Rock. 
No show. Huh? Is this your girls? Uh, one's my daughter uh -huh. and uh, one's a friend. Where were they supposed to meet you last? On on the other side of that the little uh, creek there. Okay. And then um, what, what are their swimming abilities? Do you know? Are they strong swimmers? Uh, Did they go in the water no, past no, waist deep? No. I've, I've always said to them not to go in the water. The you know, names. To be a... Can you write the names please? No. I know this is a dangerous beach. Attention on the beach, attention on the beach in the water. Lifeguards are looking for 12-year-old Sahia wearing red hair with bikini top and short bottoms. And 11-year-old Mika with black hair with a bikini top and short bottoms. If anybody has any information or see these girls, please tell them that their parents are looking for them and bring them to the nearest lifeguard stations. Thank you. The dogs are allowed over there and allowed off the leash, so I told the girls I'll take the truck and go over there and to meet me on the other side of that little creek there by Lion Rock. Surf Comp Piha, um, at Piha, I currently one lifeguard myself in route to do a uh, land and water based search for the uh, 11 and 12 year olds. Do you need more information from us, Kobe? Yeah. Yeah. Beats so that can be there one second and go on the next. <laughs> Driving unit, call-out squad has been evacuated and there are three people on the way, ETA 159. Oh, you could be the best swimmer in the world out here. You'd be sucked out, wouldn't you? While waiting for the call-out squad, Eli and cameraman and lifeguard Byron continue with the search. Adrenaline is pumping for different reasons at Hottie. I'm at Red Beach Surf Club and we all talk about trying to find something to do it, but... Even you could do it at Hot Water Beach. <laughs> I want to get out there, eh? <laughs> it's going to get much faster, scarier. <laughs> the roller coaster of water is getting bigger and furiously faster at pace. Got both. Time for the little ones to keep clear and the big boys to dive in. Windsurfer Dorian tries his luck at bodyboarding. Not sure if it's gold metal material, but he has his fun nonetheless. Look at it. Beautiful. For sure. Yeah, the kids got to have lots of fun. Unlike the scene unfolding at Piha, where the search continues for two young girls. Maybe they went up on rock or something. Are you right? Not allowed up there. Yeah. Yeah. What's your location right now? <laughs> They'd be really irresponsible, I just can't understand it. The father is certain the girls have listened to him by not going in the water. Lifeguards from North Piha and members of the call-out squad arrive and take instructions from Eli. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dad along the beach. Pretty gnarly, mate, for uh, two young girls to be out with. So if you two just walk out there first, see if they're like in the shallows right there. Yeah. I'm gonna take them along the beach and then just go all on cafes and car parks and stuff. Yeah. I'm gonna go over here by the estuary and see if they're around there. This is pretty big. Hey, um, be in trouble if you're out the back. 50 minutes now. 50 minutes? Yeah. Good. I'm about to find out. Yeah. The father is called down to do a land search with Eli. walking down the, the line rock tree. Okay. But it's not them. You good to go, mate. While Eli goes north, the others go south. Evening is setting in, and the light will soon become scarce. Need to get the tower, tower right now. Okay. Tower seat and go ahead. Then out of nowhere, relief. Where's her friend at? Where's Mika? She's down there, we thought we saw you. Oh, so she's down there? Where is she at right now? Okay. They were, they've been so Hop good. In, let's go. Where'd you go okay. way down there for? Oh, we, we're, 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 we're just over there. Find the other girl, okay? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. We found down. one she's, girl she's and... Uh, just for the um, North Piha Creek. Okay. Um, and she's, yeah, she'll be on her way back. Copy, we found one girl in route to retrieve the other girl. Oh, yeah, sweet mate. Thank you. Bye. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You said that we went here. Yeah. And we went there and stayed, and we just stayed. 
Half a kilometre north, her friend is also picked up. Yeah, Sir, I'm just to advise you the two missing girls have been uh, found and are being reunited uh, with their father as we speak. Over. Happy to be reunited, just one last piece of advice from the lifeguard. Do what he did, come to the lifeguard tower, okay? Yeah. Come to the lifeguard we station, just this is a good spot to meet. someone that we saw and be like, we can take you there or call and I'm like, I don't want my dad and I'm like, thank you. Bring the truck ready, carry him in. You all right? Thank you very much. Back at Hot Water Beach, the rapids diminish. But tourists and locals will keep a lasting impression of these Olympian athletes. Next time on Piha Rescue. A rescue with serious consequences. One, two, two three. A fugitive on the run at Piha. He'll be on this trek somewhere, it's just a matter of finding them. On the way. A close call for a girl in distress. I want you to slow your breathing down. And a suspected spinal injury. It is now raining down for spine. Injury.